All right, here are two more examples of limit problems involving rational functions. And in this first one, we have the limit as x approaches 3 of 3x cubed minus 6x squared over x minus 3. So the first thing to try is to take this value, x equals to x equal to 3, and plug it in for the variable x into this expression. And this might be a little bit easier to do if we factor it first. This will factor as 3x squared times x minus 2 over x minus 3. And then we can see that plugging in a, a 3 right there is going to be 3 times 9, which is 27, times 3 minus 2, which will be 1. So we have 27 over. And then down here we have a 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. So in this case, the limit does not exist. If we have a zero denominator and a non-zero numerator, that's different from having a zero over zero, where we could have a limit that exists. Here, the limit does not exist. This is a place where the graph has a vertical asymptote. So we can describe the behavior near x equals 3 in terms of one-sided limits. So let's talk about the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of this function. Okay, if x is approaching 3 from the left, then it's just a little bit less than 3. And if you look here, a number just a little bit less than 3 will still have a positive numerator, but will have a negative denominator. A very, very tiny magnitude, but a, but a negative number down there. So we'll end up approaching negative infinity. And we can go through similar re reasoning as x approaches 3 from the right. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x, well, if x is just a little bit bigger than 3, then this will be positive. And the numerator will still be positive as well. So the fraction as a whole will be positive. But since the denominator is so tiny, then the, the fraction as a whole becomes really huge. So as x gets really close to 3, this gets really close to positive infinity. So the limit does not exist. But we can describe the behavior of the function near the x value of 3 using the limit notation. Here's another. The limit as x approaches 4 of 3x to the 4th minus 14x cubed plus 12x squared minus 14x minus 8. Now what happens when we plug in an x value of 4 into this expression? Well, it's pretty obvious that we get a 0 denominator, but what about the, the numerator? Well, we just have to try it. So let's do this. This is 3 times 4 to the 4th, which is 256, minus 14 times 4 cubed, which is 64, plus 12 times 4 squared, which is 16, minus 14 times 4, minus 8. And if you work all that out, it comes out to 0. So this is 0 over 0. If we get 0 over 0, we want to try to simplify this expression such that when it's evaluated at 4, it hopefully doesn't equal 0 over 0, and we get an answer. And to simplify this, we want to try to factor the numerator. Factoring a fourth degree polynomial is hard, but we have a clue here. And the clue is we're looking for a factor of x minus 4. So we can set up the synthet synthetic division here. Let's just look at these coefficients. 3, negative 14, 12, negative 14, negative 8. And let's try to factor out an x minus 4. And so here we go. 3 times 4 is 12. And we add and we get negative 2. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And we add right there. And we get 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And we add and we get 2. And 2 times 4 is 8. And then we add there and we get 0. So we got it. So these are the coefficients of our other factor. This is... Uh, 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 2. 
that's what this expression will simplify to after we cancel out the factor of x minus 4. So this limit will be equivalent to this limit, the limit as x approaches 4 of this. So we can just plug in 4 into that. So this is going to be 4 times 4 cubed minus 2 times 4 squared plus 4 times 4 plus 2. And that does in fact work out to a number. It comes out to 178 and that is our answer. That would probably be very difficult to see on a graph. You might trace to that point if you had to do it graphically. But this is certainly the preferred approach algebraically. Try to factor this out to simplify the expression so you no longer have a 0 over 0 and then simply evaluate the expression that remains and you have your answer.